Hello students, today you are going to learn how to apply different transformations for, to any three dimensional object. Previously you might have learned how to apply different transformations for a 2D object. So it is similar to 2D transformation. The new thing is that for any 3D object you have three axes x, y and z. The z axis represents the depth information for any object. So, 3D objects are used for creating real world objects. So, let us see how you can represent a 3D object and then or represent a simple 3D point and then how you can apply different transformations to a simple 3D point in a 3D space. So, translation and scaling are straightforward as you did for 2D object. So, the difference lies in rotation. So, in 2D rotation, you have a single rotation since you have only two axes. Whereas in 3D space, you can divide 3D space into three planes, namely XY plane, YZ plane, and XZ plane. So, you can, which means that you can perform rotation with respect to these three planes. So in 2D transmission, you might have come across the terminology homogeneous coordinates. Homogeneous coordinates are used to make composite transmissions easier so that you can perform sequence of transmissions by using a uh, common matrix representation. So for 2D objects you had a 3 plus 3 matrix since 3D objects have 3 axes you will have an additional row and column so that the resultant matrix will be of 4 plus 4 so this is the representation of a column vector to represent a 3D point in a normal way so this is how we have to represent a single point in a 3D space in terms of homo homogeneous coordinates. Homogeneous coordinates will be easy for you to manipulate sequence of transmissions. Now let us discuss something about the coordinate systems. So here you have two different coordinate systems for uh, any 3D object. One is right hand coordinate system and then one is left hand coordinate system. So in the right hand coordinate system Z axis is projecting outwards whereas in the left hand coordinate system it is projecting inside. So you can make use of any of these two coordinate system to apply the transformations or to represent any object in a 3D space. This is for the general matrix representation for any 3D object. Now let us move on to the individual transformations. Let me start off with the translation. You already know that translation means that you are going to move an object from one location to another location or one point to another point. So here the matrix shows the actual translation that is applied by making use of the translation vector or translation distance Tx, Ty and Tz. So that in simple terms P dash is equal to T into T where T represents the translation vector, P represents the actual point in 3D space P dash represents the translated point. So, which means that x dash is equal to x plus tx, y dash equal to y plus ty. Similarly, z dash, z dash equal to z plus tz. So, it is similar to whatever you have seen in 2D transmission. So, this is a simple example. A jar 
just move from one location to another location. So these transformations will be made use of in design software, 3D software to model object and then to apply different transformations. So here you have another example where a pyramid is moved from one location to another location by applying the translation that does. You also can do inverse translation by just negating the translation vectors. Now let us move to 3D rotation. So you can do rotation by specifying the rotation axis and the rotation angle. So as I said earlier, there will be only one rotation in for 2D objects. Whereas here you can perform three different rotations with respect to the planes. So these are a pictorial representation for performing rotations with respect to different planes. So generally we know that positive angles produce counterclockwise rotation. If you make use of negative angles, you can perform clockwise rotation. So let us see the coordinate axis rotations. So first one is about z axis rotation. An object is getting rotated with respect to the z axis. So this is we have both equations and the matrix representation for the rotation. So if you rotate any object with respect to the corresponding axis, you keep the axis as such. This if you consider here for z axis rotation, z as equal to z itself. X and Y changes whereas z remains the same x and y will be changing with respect to the angle. So similar equations and matrices can be obtained for the other axis that is x axis rotation and y axis rotation by having this cyclic permutations that is you just change wherever you find x just change it to y wherever you find y change it to z Similarly, instead of z, you change it to x. So, if you consider the previous slide, we have z axis rotation. So, if you want to perform x axis rotation, you keep x as such. That is, z as is converted to x dash equal to x. So, now y dash equal to y cos theta minus z sin theta. z dash equal to y sin theta plus z cos theta. So that is what is on here x axis rotation in this corresponding matrix. Similarly, y axis rotation y dash equal to y. So in the previous we have you change x to y, you there you get x does y does equal to y, z does equal to z cos theta minus x sin theta, y does equal to z sin theta plus x cos theta. So that is what I have mentioned here. So same has been represented in matrix. So the general equation is p does equal to r theta into p. That is if you want to apply x axis rotation, p dash equal to rx of theta into p. Similarly for the other axis rotations. Now let us move on to the general three-dimensional rotations. Previously we have discussed about the rotations with respect to the corresponding axis. Now onwards we are going to see how to perform rotation with respect to any line which may be parallel to the any of the axis or not parallel to the axis. First let us see how to rotate an object with respect to a line which is parallel to the 
axis. So here is an example which shows how we can rotate an object with respect to a line which is at <coughs> x axis. So now what we should do is that so we have to perform a sequence of steps to obtain the rotation. So first you just move the line which should coordinate with any of the axis. Here it should coordinate with the x axis. So you trans apply translation to the line so that it coordinates or it syncs with the x axis. Then you rotate the object with respect to x axis. Finally you inverse translate or apply inverse translation so that you can move the line to the original position. That is what is been depicted in the picture. So generally P dash equal to P inverse into Rx of theta into T into P which means that we have to perform translation, actual translation to the point then you have to apply rotation with respect to x axis finally you have to apply inverse translation. So that is what we said here. Next one is about how you can apply rotation with respect to your line which is not parallel to any of the axis. So here uh, there is a line with the arrow head which is considered as the line to which you are going to rotate the object. So now you can't do it directly. So there are some sequence of steps to be followed to perform rotation or to rotate the object with respect to this particular line. So first step is to move the line so that it coordinates with the origin, coincides with the origin. Next you rotate, rotate the line so that it coincides with the z axis or it may be any of the axis. The third step is to perform rotation with respect to the corresponding axis with which the line has been coincided. Next you have to perform the reverse process that is you have to inverse rotate or rotate the line so that it has to move the actual position. Then you have to perform inverse translation to move the original line or to move the line to its original position. So you have to perform totally 5 steps to perform the rotation with respect to any arbitrary axis. So that is what explain. Now let us move to scaling. So here also you have general scaling and scaling with respect to a fixed point. So this is the matrix representation to perform scaling or normal scaling. So it is similar to whatever you have seen in 2D terms. Uh, 2D scaling. Now let us move on to scaling with respect to a fixed point. So this again it is similar to 2D scaling. So here you have additional z axis. Same sequence of steps is to be followed that is you first move the fixed point to the origin then you perform the scaling with respect to origin then you inverse translate the point to the so that you can move the point to its original position so at the bottom right corner the corresponding matrix has been given now let us move on to composite transformation so, which means that how we can perform sequence of transformations Again I repeat that it is similar to whatever you have done in 2D transformation. You already know that to 
create a opposite transformation you have to perform matrix multiplication so first you have to design the matrices which you are going to apply then you have to perform matrix multiplication starting from the right side so you have to maintain the sequence say for example i want to apply scaling followed by rotation then which is then followed by translation to any 3d object so first you place the scaling matrix then to its left you place the rotation matrix then after that you place the translation matrix then you do the matrix multiplication starting from the scaling then you proceed to rotation then to translation now let us move on to the other transformations which are reflection and shearing so here again you can reflect the object with respect to three different planes so rotation so reflection is equal to 180 degree rotation about the any particular axis so if you are going to perform reflection with respect to x axis then you need to just rotate the x coordinate point here to 180 degrees see so this is what the matrix representation for reflection about xy plane so uh, or with respect to z axis so where z axis equal to minus is it the other things remains the same that is x and y coordinates does not change its position z alone changes the position so it is similar for the other two reflections so for x z or y axis reflection you change y dash to minus y similarly for z axis sorry x axis it is x is equal to minus x the next to transformation or the last transformation is shearing we there's a difference between scaling and shearing scaling is applied just to increase or reduce the size of any object whereas shearing can be applied for modifying the shape of the object So here it's an example. Again, here also we can share the object with respect to all three axes. So we have a matrix here, which is which can be used for sharing an object with respect to z axis. So we can also derive the matrix for the remaining axis. That is. x axis here and y axis here so it is left to you so that's all about today's session let us meet in another session